the corpus hermeticum to asclepius notes on the text this dialogue sets forth the difference between the physical and metaphysical worlds in the context of greek natural philosophy some of the language is fairly technical the errant spheres of section 6 and 7 are the celestial spheres carrying the planets while the inerrant sphere is that of the fixed stars it is useful to keep in mind also that air and spirit are interchangeable concepts in greek thought and that the concept of the good has a range of implications which don't come across in the english word one is that the good of any being in greek thought was also that being's necessary goal one hermes all that is moved asclepius is it not moved in something and by something asclepius assuredly h and must not that in which it's moved be greater than the moved a it must h mover again has greater power than moved a it has of course h the nature furthermore of that in which it's moved must be quite other from the nature of the moved a it must completely 2h is not again this cosmos vast so vast that then it there exists no body greater a assuredly h and massive too for it is crammed with multitudes of other mighty frames nay rather all the other bodies that there are a it is h and yet the cosmos is a body a it is a body h and one that's moved 3a assuredly h of what size then must be the space in which it's moved and of what kind must be the nature of that space must it not be far vaster than the cosmos in order that it may be able to find room for its continued course so that the move may not be cramped for want of room and lose its motion a something thrice greatest one it needs must be immensely vast 4h and of what nature must it not be asclepius of just the contrary and is not contrary to body bodiless a agreed h space then is bodiless but bodiless must either be some godlike thing or god himself and by some godlike thing i mean no more the generable i.e that which is generated but the ingenable five if then space be some godlike thing it is substantial but if tis god himself it transcends substance but it is to be thought of otherwise than god and in this way god is first thinkable for us not for himself for that the thing that's thought doth fall beneath the thinker's sense god then cannot be thinkable unto himself in that he's thought of by himself as being nothing else but what he thinks but he is something else for us and so he's thought of by us six if space is therefore to be thought it should not then be thought as god but space if god is also to be thought he should not be conceived as space but as energy that can contain all space 
Further, all that is moved is moved not in the moved but in the stable. And that which moves another is of course stationary, for it is impossible that it should move with it. A. How is it, then, that things down here, thrice greatest one, are moved with those that are already moved? For thou hast said the errant spheres were moved by the inner rant one. H. This is not, O Asclepius, a moving with, but one against, they are not moved with one another, but one against the other. It is this contrariety which turneth the resistance of their motion into rest. For that resistance is the rest of motion. 7 Hence, 2. The errant spheres, being moved contrarily to the inner rant one, are moved by one another by mutual contrariety, and also by the spable one through contrariety itself. And this can otherwise not be. The bears up there, which neither set nor rise, think st thou they rest or move. A. They move, thrice greatest one. H. And what their motion, my Asclepius? A. Motion that turns forever round the same. H. But revolution, motion around same, is fixed by rest. For round the same doth stop beyond same. Beyond same then, being stopped, if it be steaded in round same, the contrary stands firm, being rendered ever stable by its contrariety. Eight of this I'll give thee here on earth an instance, which the eye can see. Regard the animals down here, a man, for instance, swimming. The water moves, yet the resistance of his hands and feet give him stability, so that he is not borne along with it, nor sunk thereby. A. Thou hast, thrice greatest one, a just a most clear instance. H. All motion, then, is caused in station and by station. The motion, therefore, of the cosmos, and of every other hylic animal, will not be caused by things exterior to the cosmos, but by things interior outward to the exterior, such things as soul, or spirit, or some such other thing incorporeal. Tis not the body that doth move the living thing in it, nay, not even the whole body of the universe a lesser body e'en though there be no life in it. 9a. What meanest thou by this, thrice greatest one? Is it not bodies, then, that move the stock and stone and all the other things inanimate? H. By no means, O Asclepius. The something in the body, the that which moves the thing inanimate, this surely's not a body, for that it moves the two of them, both body of the lifter and the lifted. So that a thing that's lifeless will not move a lifeless thing. That which doth move another thing is animate, in that it is the mover. Thou seest, then, how heavy laden is the soul, for it alone doth lift two bodies. That things, moreover, moved are moved in something as well as moved by something is clear. 10 A. Yeah, O thrice greatest one, things moved must needs be moved in something void. H. Thou sayest well, O my Asclepius. For naught of things that are is void. Alone that is not is void and stranger to subsistence. 
Therefore that which is subsistent can never change to void? A. Are there, then, O thrice greatest one, no such things as an empty cask, for instance, and an empty jar, a cup and vat, and other things like unto them? H. Alack, Asclepius, for thy far wandering from the truth. Think st thou that things most full and most replete are void? 11a. How meanest thou, thrice greatest one? h. Is not air body? a. It is. h. And doth this body not pervade all things, and so, pervading, fill them? and body, doth body not consist from blending of the four? full, then, of air are all thou kayest void, and if of air, then of the four. Further, of this the converse follows, that all thou kayest full are void, of air, for that they have their space filled out with other bodies, and, therefore, are not able to receive the air therein. These, then, which thou dost say are void, they should be hollow named, not void, for they not only are, but they are full of air and spirit. 12a, thy argument, Logos, thrice greatest one, is not to be gainsaid, air is a body. Further, it is this body which doth pervade all things, and so, pervading, fill them. What are we, then, to call that space in which the all doth move? H. The bodiless, Asclepius. A. What, then, is bodiless? H. Tis mind and reason, logos, whole out of whole, all self-embracing, free from all body, from all error free, unsensible to body and untouchable, self state in self, containing all, preserving those that are, whose rays, to use a likeness, are good, truth, light beyond light, the archetype of soul. A what, then, is God? 13 h. Not any one of these is he, for he it is that causeth them to be, both all and each and everything of all that are. Nor hath he left a thing beside that is not, but they are all from things that are and not from things that are not. For that the things that are not have naturally no power of being anything, but naturally have the power of the inability to be. And, conversely, the things that are have not the nature of some time not being. 14a What sayest thou ever, then, God is? H. God, therefore, is not mind, but cause that the mind is, God is not spirit, but cause that spirit is, God is not light, but cause that the light is. Hence one should honor God with these two names the Good and Father, names which pertain to him alone and no one else. For no one of the other so-called gods, no one of men, or dim ones, can be in any measure good, but God alone, and he is good alone and nothing else. The rest of things are separable all from the good's nature. For all the rest are soul and body, which have no place that can contain the good. 15 For that as mighty is the greatness of the good as is the being of all things that are, both bodies and things bodiless, things sensible, and intelligible things. 
Call thou not, therefore, aught else good, for thou would st imius be, nor anything at all at any time call God but good alone, for so thou would st again be impious. 16 Though, then, the good is spoken of by all, it is not understood by all, what thing it is. Not only, then, is God not understood by all, but both unto the gods and some of the men they out of ignorance do give the name of good, though they can never either be or become good. For they are very different from God, while good can never be distinguished from him, for that God is the same as good. The rest of the immortal ones are nonetheless honored with the name of God, and spoken of as gods, but God is good not out of courtesy but out of nature. For that God's nature and the good is one, one OS the kind of both, from which all other kinds proceed. The good is he who gives all things and not receives. God, then, doth give all things and receive not. God, then, is good, and good is God. 17 The other name of God is Father, again because he is the that which make all. The part of Father is to make. Wherefore child making is a very great and a most pious thing in life for them who think aright, and to leave life on earth without a child a very great misfortune and impiety, and he who hath no child is punished by the dying ones after death. And this is the punishment, that that man's soul who hath no child, shall be condemned unto a body with neither man's nor woman's nature, a thing accursed beneath the sun. Wherefore, Asclepius, let not your sympathies be with the man who hath no child, but rather pity his mishap, knowing what punishment abides for him. Let all that has been said then, be to thee, Asclepius, an introduction to the gnosis of the nature of all things.